Hey, what's up you guys? It's officially, finally, fall! I've been so excited for the weather to change and it finally is. However, this video would have been perfect for summer as it has nothing to do with the fall season. But nevertheless, here it is. In this video, I'm going to be making my version of Togepi. Togepi is a Pokemon from the earlier generations. In fact, it's probably one of the most well-known Pokemon as it's so easily identifiable by its design on its shell. For this custom, I'm going to be using Apple White from Ever After High. Her super pale skin tone is similar to Togepi's. First, I need to blank this doll out. Cut off her hair as close to the root as possible. Dunk the doll's head into hot water to loosen the vinyl so her head comes off easily. Taking some pliers, I go in and scrape out all the remaining hair. I use pure acetone to remove her face paint. Then give her face a wash with soap and water and reattach it. I cover her body for this next step so it stays clean. Using a two-part epoxy sculpt, I cover her entire head. This doll is going to have no hair. Togepi is a spike ball Pokemon. Ooh, whatever that means. But it has what looks like a crown-shaped head, so that's what I'm giving her. Also something that I've noticed with many Pokemon is that they are never assigned genders. They're referred to by their name and not their pronouns. But this Togepi is definitely female. Right now I'm using a little water to smooth out some of the clay after it started to harden a little. Then I leave it to sit for 24 hours to fully cure. And then I can sand down the edges. I want everything to be as seamless as I can get it. And unfortunately I wasn't paying close enough attention to what I was doing and used too strong a grip. So, all of that smoothing out I did earlier was for nothing. Ah well, moving on. Still turned out pretty darn good. For my standards, anyway. <laughs> now to spray her face with a sealant. I'm using Mr. Super Clear. And always wear a mask. I matched her skin tone the best I could. For her dress, I made a simple pattern, pinned it to some white fabric, and cut it out. And it seems that I always use fabric that frays super crazy, so I secure all the edges with some fabric glue. I then take to the sewing machine! I usually don't mind sewing by hand because it can be really relaxing, but I wasn't feeling it that day, so machine it is. I use the doll as a reference to mark the placement of two darts. Sewing darts into a garment allows the material to lay nicely and give a tighter, more form-fitting fit. Now I can bring this dress to life. I've drawn the outline for Togepi's shell design, and I'm using it as a guide to paint. You definitely do not want to water down your paint when painting on fabric because it will cause the paint to bleed out and ruin the design. Which is exactly what happened to me. I, for whatever reason, watered down the red paint a little and now I'm paying for it. But I'm going to fix it with some white acrylic and hope that it isn't too noticeable. It definitely looks like a glowing section of white. <laughs> I've created a belt that'll cinch her waist to give the dress more shape. Onto her shoes! 
I'm using polymer clay to make them. I first build the sole of her shoe, create the exact shape that I want, and then once I'm happy with how it looks, I'll bake it before building the next part. Then I'll build up the toe of her shoes and bake them again. So baking them twice caused them to burn, but I expected that. German ovens, I feel, tend to not get as hot as American ovens, so adjusting for that difference is always tricky. But it's okay, because I am painting them white anyways. Her shoes were made out of scrap white clay that I had, so it wasn't the cleanest from the start. Lastly, I give her a face. I will definitely not be following the mold of her face. I want to give her egg-shaped eyes similar to the actual Pokemon. I'm giving her honey brown eyes, so I'm using a lot of browns and neutral colors. I also decided to not fill in her lips with color at all. I want the main focus to be her eyes and her crown. Having a flesh toned lip will also stay true to the nature of Togepi. Now I'm taking pastels to the areas of her head that I want to push back. Pastels always bring so much life to the doll. The brand I use is called Alpha Color. Togepi is most known for being the baby Pokemon. In the anime series, Misty spends most of her storyline nurturing Togepi, who has imprinted on Misty and thinks she's its mother. So part of my inspiration for this custom is to imagine Misty's Togepi all grown up. I want her overall appearance to have a slight nod to her mother, who wore a summery outfit all the time. I'm going in with some acrylic paints to enhance the details. Give her eyes the lights, and then this doll is done. I'm so, so, so super happy with how she turned out. She's simple, yet different. She's so unique and definitely a one of a kind. She definitely resembles Misty in certain ways. Somehow in the face and just the very pale skin and her overall silhouette is very Misty.
She just looks like she's constantly having fun, and I think that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, Zs!